Table number 9 dramatically picks up the series pace, pushing towards an apparent announced endgame in Cable number 12, while simultaneously exploring a huge variety of Cable's connections across the Marvel Universe. Whereas most of Duggan and Noda's run has felt brisk and often slight, Cable number 9 is full of significantly more scene changes and interactions that provide some interesting developments for our young little Cable. Title answer. What do we learn about resurrecting clones in the Krakoa era of mutant kind? Is Old Man Cable definitely coming back here in the Hickman era of X-Men? And theories and predictions for things to come in Reign of X and in Cable down the line. Hey everybody, I'm Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of comicbookherald.com. You are listening to Cracking Krakoa number 168. Hey everybody, if you are interested in seeing the debut of Cable in the 90s X-Men Reading Club, we will be live here on the Comic Book Herald YouTube channel. Saturday, March 27th, you can find links in the show notes to check out and join us for that live conversation. Be taking some questions about the debut of Cable, as well as the character's history and his role in Krakoa as well. If you like the Comic Book Herald YouTube channel, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, and commenting. You can find full X-Men and comic book reading orders on comicbookherald.com. Spoilers for Discuss Comics follow. Writer Jerry Duggan, artist Phil Noto, letters by Joe Sabino. So Cable and Esme, we open this comic with them disrupting an AIM sub on like a really fun double date, right? Like an AIM sub gets too close to Krakoa, you're like, let's go on a date. Sounds fun, they have a great time doing it. Taking down AIM, uh, beekeeper henchies, always a good time. We get this continued sort of good Summers family and friends vibes that is one of my favorite things about this era of Krakoa and about this version of Young Cable, where Scott just gets to be a dad, like hanging out on a boat with Emma here as Cable and Esme return from sabotaging an AIM submarine, you know, in the deep, deep blue sea. Um, Obviously, Cable kind of blows it with Esme because after disabling AIM's nuclear reactor, you know, he bails, right? And Cable is is totally obsessed and totally uh, sort of overwhelmed right now with the return of Strife and with the fact that not only has Strife returned, you know, this seemingly evil alternate clone version of himself that he thought he got rid of, but he's making clones of young baby Cable, and also he's stealing literal babies for who knows what, right? They're the Order of X and Strife, they're stealing literal babies, and we don't really know why yet, so Cable, sadly, here, Nate Summers, disappointing as may after what could have been a very sweet date on a boat of all things. But nobody can find Strife, okay? Uh, Psychically, however they try, the the mutants, they cannot find Strife, which is honestly pretty interesting considering he was thought dead is a mutant clone and that Cerebro can't detect him. You know, vibes, I would say, shades here of Children of the Atom when, you know, they're like, hey, yeah, Professor X Cerebro can't detect these kids, like warning bells, alarm bells. Like, that's that's a problem if you're actually dealing with mutants. Rachel Summers tries and no dice, uh, but nonetheless, you know, and again, I, I really enjoy this dynamic too of like, Nate and Rachel being brother and sister. You know, it's this thing we don't really get to see because all the time travel shenanigans and in alternate realities of these characters. But Rachel does mention that, um, you know, with the kidnapped babies, like, hey, last time or, you know, in, in the past when we've been talking about kidnapped babies, there was this thing where, like, there were demons that captured them <laughs> and tried to use them for a spell. If you saw that reference, like, wait, what? That's a part of the build to Inferno, okay? The 1989 X-Men event. I've got a crack in Krakow, a deep dive on it. Here in the channel but essentially what you need to know is uh nastier this demon uh from the the realm of of limbo uh tried to kidnap a whole host of mutant babies to make a pentagram of them up in the sky and uh that was going to allow limbo to come and take over earth okay so the inferno babies is a plot line that then extends into like the zeb wells written new mutants run in the 2010s which another run that i've got a a coverage here on Kraken and krakoa if you are so inclined but long story short mutant babies sometimes good for spells apparently (laughs) so cable takes takes that info and he goes to the source. He turns to Magic, a uh, ruler of Limbo, who takes him to Nastier in prison in Limbo. Uh, this was very interesting for a few reasons. Uh, one, just because of the obvious, like, how hard it's connecting back to the continuity of X-Men in Inferno. I think, too, like, confirmation that Ileana is the ruler of Limbo right now, kind of a thing that, like, we haven't really seen her spending a lot of time there, despite uh, various references. Plus, too, like, what is the status of Nastier? I definitely could not have told you prior to this point. Apparently, uh, being uh, imprisoned in Limbo and also tortured by uh, by little demons. We'll get to that in a second. But, I mean, the sequence, I thought, was intentionally, too. So, when Cable interrogates Nastier, um, he finds out, or is told 
by the demon that uh, he's not working with Strife. He's like, I don't, I don't actually know anything about this. Um, I thought this sequence was intentionally trying to rule out the theories that Old Man Cable is trapped in limbo, right? We've seen Old Man Cable trapped in this sort of red, hellish dimension really since the series began. There's a tease in Cable number one, the first issue of this run by Dugan and Noto. And I, I got the vibe that this was potentially trying to rule that out, although certainly I wouldn't put it past a literal demon <laughs> who is up to no good all the time to lie. Very possible uh, that he would lie. But then again, you have to consider that he is being tortured by recorder playings of the Proclaimers. Okay. And apparently this is absolute hell in limbo for nasty year um, to, to hear these recorders works. Pretty, pretty solid gag and got to get out the obligatory. Ba -ba. All right, got that out of the way without uh, doing too much of the song. So Cable, when he gets back then, we get even more sort of X-Men continuity and, and scene changes and connecting to characters that have ties to Cable and Strife. He attacks Wildside, uh, a mutant with a longtime kind of membership as part of Strife's crew. Wildside doesn't actually know anything, but is basically like, screw you, Cable, I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to tell you anything. Hope Summers then steps in, uh, breaks up the fight between the two. This is a, a really fun dynamic that honestly I wish we could spend more time in, but it's good to see these characters interact. Um, again, Hope Summers is the protege, almost the sort of like um, you know, almost adopted daughter of Nate Summers Cable, the old man, right? So post 2000s event Messiah Complex, Cable takes baby Hope Summers and he takes her into the future to protect her and keep her safe. And, and they train together and he trains Hope until she actually returns in X-Men Second Coming and beyond, right? So, so Cable, as an old man, is a father figure to Hope Summers. They have a really interesting dynamic. Um, but young Cable is like this weird thing of seeing your dad as a teenager, right? And not knowing who he is and kind of not knowing what his role and purpose is uh, so it's a good dynamic it's good to see these characters connect again it's that sort of thing where like I don't I'm not necessarily disappointed Cable's gonna end with 12 I think that's a good time for it possibly um, it, it, hopefully it'll it'll you know just let these creators like move on to other things and these characters move on to other things but at the same time it is like yeah Hope and Cable interacting like that's fun that's good use of continuity and these characters backgrounds if you're going to have young teenage Cable but the question here is how long are we actually gonna have that right so young Cable he teases to Hope a plan to bring back old man Cable he's like he's the one who can deal with strife he knows how to do it we gotta find him wherever he is somewhere sometime Time. And I'm generally ready for the return, I think. Uh, I have given definitely, like, I, I'm not a huge Cable fan to begin with, so it's not like, you know... Uh, cable in extermination, you know, the younger version killing the older version that didn't like upset my sense of balance. <laughs> like I'm fine with this story. I'm interested to see how it's played out. Like I said, it's led to some fun things you wouldn't have gotten otherwise, such as these family dynamics and these characters connecting in ways that they hadn't previously. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's time. I think it's time for Old Man Cable. There's a quote at the start of this issue that basically says like, everyone feared old man cable no one fears the young one or something to that extent i'm paraphrasing and i think you're we're kind of missing out on like what cable brings to the table and and just like as the gruff soldier in a way that um i think will be useful and interesting in the Kirko era like i think it would be good to have that character back again because the young cable right now is so inexperienced and like i'll, I'll concede here that duggan and company like they made me feel bad for young cable you know like he's super inexperienced he lacks a lot of confidence and he's kind of just like he sees himself as a failure at every turn and and uh, that's kind of what we're seeing with him as well, you know, and it'll be interesting, too, to see, like, what would this mean if Old Man Cable does come back for a book that Cable's in like Sword? Like, what does that mean for to have like Old Man Cable on that team? But honestly, the most interesting thing in this entire issue is we get the most formal data page we've seen regarding duplicates and Krakow and Resurrection Protocols, okay? And what the the information says, in more or less, is basically Krakow will not resurrect clones, okay? Um, and it, it, technically, that's not quite what it says. Like, it says it will only do one version, okay? One of the duplicates would be eligible. So if you have for example, Cable and Strife, or Young Cable and Old Cable, they'd be like, pick one. One is the one that gets resurrected, okay? That's my interpretation of this. But what that seems to do is rule out, like, basically all the duplicates that we've been talking about. So Gabby, uh, as a clone of Laura, is on the fence, I would say, as, as a clone of Laura Kinney, Wolverine. Like, Gabby, I'm nervous about it. This is something we've talked about in New Mutants by VDIL and Rod Rice. And, like, Gabby's asking the question. She's like, wait, can I get resurrected? And people are like, uh, let's talk about it later, because I don't think anybody knows if the answer is yes, right? It's probably why we haven't seen Kid Apocalypse. Uh, Evan Savener, right? Probably why we haven't seen him. Madeline Pryor, obviously, in the pages of Hellions, we already saw her resurrection get rejected for this very reason. I think Strife would fall into this category. I think, like, Joseph, for example, Clone Magneto, and on and on and on. You're going to have a fair amount of versions and X-Men characters that, like, cannot be resurrected. I think, as storytelling goes, 
this makes a fair amount of sense, right? Like it makes sense to streamline these things and not have like oodles and oodles of versions. I think the challenge is just going to be like, I, one thing X-Men and, and the Hickman era in particular is very good at right now is just saying like, what is good about X-Men? Like what is good about mutant stories in the Marvel Universe and what is good about these comics? Let's just do that. So like, hey, people like Cyclops with Jean and Emma? Cool, let's just do that. Uh, people like different costumes on characters all the time? Yeah, let's just use a bunch of different costumes. It's small stuff like that. I think the, the era is very good at. I think where it will run into some trouble is like, yeah, Gabby, Honey Badger, everybody loves that character. Um, wait, we can't resurrect her? Why not? And and then, like, that's where it's going to run some issues with these sort of hardline stances, which, again, like, a fair amount of interpretation you could do on this data page. I mean, it's not news to us that there are actually lines in the sand when it comes to resurrection, right? Like, it is for mutants only. Like, and that's something we don't talk about a lot, but Krakoa has conquered death, right? It's the death of death here in the Krakoa era. This is a, a technology that they could extend to humankind. <laughs> like, like, they could. Now, procedurally like structurally they, they couldn't do that right they, they don't have the infrastructure to manage those numbers um but they obviously like they're like no this is for for mutant kinds like that is that is a line we're drawing okay and you can do the same thing with clones like that is something we accept um it's just difficult when you then talk about like characters that are known in x-men history like oh but but them too i mean i have to wonder too like this could be a problem for mr sinister you know <laughs> like it also raises the question like how does krakoa determine clones uh in this in this era right is it cerebral based is it professor like and if that's the case like that technology i don't think it seems to be working because mr sinister is like frequently using clones you know we've seen this time and time again uh you see in the language here this undermines the validity of the protocols sinister is doing that constantly right like he's doing that all the time and i feel like pretending it's a secret like pretending that we wouldn't think or know that mr sinister is creating clones all the time not even just of himself now he created a clone of betsy braddock for jamie uh, in, in the pages of Excalibur, right? So, like, that's something that needs to be addressed as well. And then the final piece of this puzzle, too, is like, okay, only one of the duplicates would be eligible. How is that sort of language and law and, or maybe not law, but just, like, general protocol, how is that going to hold up when we get into the idea of chimeras, right? And and DNA of mutants being mixed together in the way that we saw in, like, the Powers of Ten timeline where we have, you know, a, a hundreds of cardinals, for example, right? These protocols kind of go out the window at that point. So that'll be interesting to see developed as well. I mean, right now, I think like this is, this was my general understanding of things too. You know, I, I don't think, again, not I don't think, but like we're just, we're not going to see clones are resurrected. We're not going to see alternate dimension versions of characters and we're not going to see time traveling doubles resurrected. Um, but again, there is that loophole of saying to put a finer point on it, only one of the duplicates will be eligible. That is a loophole that they're clearly putting in there, I think, to say we can bring back Old Man Cable uh, but it's going to be at the expense of younger Cable. And, and that was, frankly, how I expect this series to end uh, in issue 12. I mean, I'm glad to know that Cable is basically a 12-issue maxi series with an apparent arc towards bringing back the more familiar Cable after giving young teen Cable his time to shine, essentially, right? But maybe not. Like, this is an era of the unexpected. Um, I, I don't... I'd be surprised, honestly, if Young Cable stayed around past these 12 issues. I think it's gonna be, he's going to sacrifice himself. He's going to defeat Strife. I feel like that's the arc to get through. And, I mean, I think, too, like, the Cable and Extermination in the X-Men series where he kills Old Man Cable, um, that was pre-House and Powers, right? So that's, like, that's a plot point that these creators in this, this era of X-Men, they don't have to be that beholden to that. You know, it's a thing that happened. They've dealt with it. They've told the Young Cable stories. Can we bring Old Man Cable back now and have that be sort of the the version of the X-Men that more people know and love? Uh, yeah, I, I feel like that's actually a pretty good solution. So the Kirk Cohen for the next issue, Cable number 10, reads Come Back. Obviously, this is most likely to tie to Cable. Hopefully, we'll learn more about where he actually is and how they plan to bring him back, which I'm looking forward to. So let me know what you think about uh, Cable so far. Let me know your theories, your comments, uh, especially too, like on the resurrection protocols and duplicates. Like, is this a huge bummer? Is this basically what you saw coming? Um, you know, I, I think like basically with everything we've talked about through this era of X-Men so far, I don't feel like it comes like a huge shock, uh, but definitely it doesn't bode well, probably for like Gabby would be the most notorious and beloved character that uh that comes to mind for me right now so thanks everybody for listening and supporting uh you can support the site and the show over on patreon.com slash comic book herald all that is greatly greatly appreciated i'm dave you can find my stuff comicbookherald.com at comic book herald on social look for the best comics ever in my marvelous year podcast for more from me thanks for everybody for listening and as always enjoy the comics